Thank you for joining us today on 10 Minutes with the Artist, an episodic series that explores the art practice and the personal vision that guides artists. On today's episode, we're very proud to have Morgan Joseph Hamilton, who exhibited his recent works at the Juried Taking Issue exhibition at the Memorial Union Gallery. Morgan's work speaks to personal, social, and political identity through the creation of flags. His work in this exhibition represents place through the symbols that make it unique, the colors that make it recognizable, and the cause that it has come to define. Morgan will be joining us via Skype to talk about his work, inspiration, and the concepts that guide his artistic practice. I'm Anthony Ferris, and this is 10 Minutes with the Artist. Thank you so very much, Morgan, for joining us today. Um, so flags are these sort of mass-produced uh, items traditionally, uh, and they have uh, an impact, the potential for an impact because of that. But uh, your piece is this sort of one-of-a-kind flag, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about why you created a uh, single uh, image, a sim single icon. Uh, yeah, totally. Um, so... <clears throat> The, the kind of project, so this is one of five flags uh, in a series, and the project came about because I have spent the last four years like driving all across the country for various reasons, um, and so whenever I get into a state, they're always, you know, their, their attitude towards their flag is um, different from state to state, so I started really paying attention to them then, and and then I was like thinking about what flags mean for the state. And of course they want to like symbolize all the great things. Um, and specifically with the one that's on display there, that's Arizona's flag. So they have this beautiful like starburst in the background with this blue vista in, in, in the bottom. And so I was, I was thinking about how I could reimagine their flag to better fit um, the politics that were going on at the time, which was that controversial bill um, to basically stop anyone now on the road and asked for their uh, their ID, which was basically targeted at the uh, uh, undocumented immigrants. So that's when I was really rethinking about, you know, how would I show Arizona's flag um, with more of, uh, a, you know, with a grittier view, not so much the grandiose view that the state wants. So that kind of got me thinking about the flag. And um, I... I, I really like stopping at uh, Goodwills and stuff in different states because you find the craziest stuff. Um, and so I started doing this on my road trip where I'd stop at a Goodwill in each state and I'd pick up um, a couple shirts, um, like t-shirts and stuff. So I would use the fabric from those t-shirts to make these flags for each state. So the flag that you have there um, is made from scraps from Goodwill in from Arizona. So I was working on the front and I was, I had completely intended to make them double sided because you know, that's how we always see flags or waving. Um, but then as I was like getting into actually making the, the surface of the flag, I was like, this, this is more of a surface and it's not something that I ne necessarily want to be like hoisted on a pole or, uh, displayed double sided. Um, so I decided to, to just, you do a flat color in the back so that, even if you did peek behind it, um, you wouldn't really see anything to draw or to put emphasis on that front, you know? Um, so I think that's why I, I made that decision, whether it was conscious at first or not, but they all, they all have just one side. So, okay. uh, okay. and, and they're that, that single, uh, object, uh, sort of like the, almost like the, the clothes that you're choosing, you know, like, uh, for an individual to wear. Um, right. It doesn't have the the quality of uh, you know like you don't see your flag all over the place, um, okay. you know like on the sides of the road. Um, is it like a is it a sacred object? Is it precious in some way because it is a single object, or is it the first of a kind and it's going to be more than that? Um, I think I saw them more as a modern uh, working man tapestry, okay. you know, because um, I. Uh, was really into the, the medieval tapestries in my undergrad. 
and they were these really singular things that people, you know, put time into, but they were made to dress the walls, you know? And so I was thinking of these kind of as uh, banners in their own right, um, aside from being a symbolic flag for a state, uh, but also kind of a wall dressing. Okay. Right? So like um, turning, turning something that's supposed to be this living symbol into decoration, which is kind of what we do in a lot of ways. So I think that's that's another way that I was trying to get it done. Okay. Is, is it important for you um, to have somebody be able to recognize the state that it's from? At first it was. Um, but then as I was kind of showing it to people, uh, they started making their own guesses because I was... I was directing the political commentary, um, you know, from that state. So people saw the bar barbed wire and the fence, and they saw this like big golden western star, and they're like, "Oh, is that like um, I don't know, is that uh, New Mexico or Texas or something?" I'm like, "Well, you're close." Uh, so I, when I tell them it's Arizona, they're like, "Oh, okay." Um, but it's also kind of a way I found. I, I think I accepted it more when I was like, "Okay, well, people are actually learning because." Now they're going to see this, and then it's going to say, you know, Arizona State flag, and they're like, well, what's the real one look like? You know, so might, maybe they'll do some independent research. So right. I, I, I don't mind it at all now. Okay. So, uh, like, for the American flag, you have uh, these colors that were used as stand-ins for ideas. I mean, uh, the blue right. for justice, the white for innocence. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how you were thinking about color? Yeah. Um, well... My color choices were very derivative based on the um, state flag itself, uh, but I stayed very, very true. In fact, I looked up a lot of the um, Pantone colors of each flag, because if you go onto a state flag's Wikipedia page, um, sometimes they'll have the exact dimensions, the exact proportions, the exact like uh, dye colors or the Pantone colors, and I thought that was really interesting. So I. Uh, would print out, um, I think for this one, because this was the most chromatic one that I've done, I would print out the Pantones onto a cardstock, and I would go through my shirts and try to match them as much as possible. And I think there was only one, it wasn't on the Arizona, but it was another flag that I actually had to get, like, um, an acrylic water mix so that I could, like, tone the color down to match better, mm -hmm. so. But with that one, the, uh, the T-shirts the and stuff from Goodwill actually match pretty well, so. Um, as far as color, I, I wanted to be very true to the actual state flag because I didn't want to um, insert any of my own um, kind of artistic ideas into it beyond matching and trying to make this facsimile of what's already there. Okay, that's pretty interesting. It's like a uh, like a puzzle, you know, like you have these colors and then you're trying to figure out how to um, to fit them into whatever. Um, exactly. And, like, that's fun to me. So I think I did it mostly for myself because, yeah, you're right. It was like a puzzle. Yeah. So uh, there are these really interesting things that happen in your piece with uh, a color switch. Um, so you have, like, a solid object like the fence. Um, and I think it starts out red. And then as it goes above this uh, line, it uh, switches color to become um, a blue like the sky. Right. Um, so I was wondering if you could talk about how you made that choice. Um, it, okay, so in, in the flag itself, uh, there's a horizon line. And below that, um, it's a, like a dark blue. And above that, it's red and yellow uh, changing uh, in like rays. So I was originally going to do like the fence posts and the, the, uh, the chain link lines themselves are going to be red. Um, but when I was looking at the red against the red uh, and the yellow of the starburst, uh, it was just getting lost. So then I, um, I honestly, I think I just like uh, cut up some scraps of the blue to see what it looked like. And I was like, well, there we go. There's a solution. Um, so when the red post turns into that, like, uh, you know, that shape for the barbed wire mm -hmm. fence, um, it was just natural to put that blue there because it brings in that kind of field a little bit higher. Um, I don't know. It was one of those like kind of split uh, split second panic decisions because um, I was like, red doesn't look good. Uh, what do I do? So then, you know, I kind of made that decision and uh, I think it worked. And but it, it also taught me. I was like, oh, well, 
well, now I'm going to know that for any other kind of problem that I have in the future. Yeah. It becomes a, um, a pretty interesting metaphor, actually, because you have, like, the fence color, uh, which has, uh, which is limiting. A fence is limiting, but the barbed wire is actually um, violent in a way. Mm -hmm. And uh, for it to turn into something that's sort of, like, infinite, like the sky looking up, you know, but, like, you know, right. you look up in the sky and you imagine. Um, and for that to be turned into something that's violent becomes really powerful. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, how important is it to you that it's handmade? Um, it was very important, uh, especially looking back. Um, I may not... I, I may not have known that at the time that I made it, which was in 2015, um, early, early last year. Uh, I was really getting into this um, almost obsession of, of, of handmaking everything. So um, a lot of the times I do video work. So in that video, everything that you see, uh, for the most part, is handmade by me. And that's very important because I'm like, you know, I, I don't want... I don't know. The video, the camera is a is a selective framing device. So everything inside of there, it, I'm responsible for. It. So looking back, I can uh, I can see the early beginnings of that thought process. So um, finding the clothes at this goodwill, and then like hand sewing everything together, uh, it kind of put me in a trance because I would sit there on my bedroom floor, stitching two hundred you know, 145 little diamonds onto this plane, and you just you just you're just going. And like, um, I remember I would kind of like snap out of it and I'd be like, what time is it? Um, so it was kind of like an interesting way of putting myself there. And I, I thought about, you know, back in the, um, 18th century, people making these flags, you know, they were hand stitched. So, uh, it was kind of an interesting way of taking myself out of time while also being incredibly present because, uh, it was nice. It was nice and therapeutic, but also I was doing this strange, like you said, violent act with, with uh, you know, stitching and then making this political statement inside of a state flag. So yeah. that was really powerful. Um, so at the very end of our interviews, we like to ask a few questions just about sort of creative process. So uh, what time of day do you feel like you're most creative? Um. It's kind of two part process. So during the day, during the daylight hours, uh, I would say my mind is most creative. So maybe like afternoon, uh, but at night is when my body catches up. So like I am a night owl and I will stay in, in the studio or in my bedroom until three o'clock in the morning until I get done what I need to get done. So it's kind of like a two step process. Okay. Uh, do you listen to music or the radio or anything like that while you work? Um, radio, no. I try, sometimes I'll try an audiobook, but I find that when I'm working, you know, my brain is focused. So I'm not, I'm hearing the words, but it's just rhythm and, and I don't understand, I'm not comprehending. So I have to stop doing that. Music sometimes, but if I'm being honest, I will put uh, Netflix on. Um, a lot of TV shows like Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, or Voyager, because I've already watched them several times through. So, like, I know the shows. I don't need to focus, but it's just a good, like, background thing going on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anything that you're reading right now? Um, I, during the semester, it is, like, my brain is uh, is all, all in on what I'm doing. But over the summer, I read several uh, sci-fi books, like Arthur C. Clarke. Um, I read a Heinlein book. Uh, yeah, I'm really into the, the science fiction uh, I think that's my go-to right now. Yeah. And maybe the last question would be, uh, what's next for you? Well, um, that's a very good question. Uh, I, I spent a lot of this year creating objects for um, an exhibition called Welcome to Astroism, which is uh, a religion that I created based on NASA. So it's a future religion based on NASA. Uh, so I spent a lot of time making sculptural objects, and uh, I think I burnt myself out. So I, I really want to get back with the camera and start doing um, video and audio work. So I think I think that's where I'm going right now. 
Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so very much, uh, Morgan, for joining us. And I'd like to uh, thank you all for your time and your interest in the professional practice and creative explorations happening here at North Dakota State University. So thank you very much. And for everyone here at the Memorial Union Gallery, keep creative. Mm -hmm.